How did this happen? One moment before, Expo was alone and every AI company on the planet adopting it, and suddenly there's new competition in the React Native market. Let's talk about a new framework, a new job, and a new cross-platform technology, and what all of that means for us React Native developers. First of all, Michal from Callstack announced a new React Native framework for enterprise app. We all knew that introducing the concept of React Native frameworks meant that there could be other frameworks in the future next to Expo. And now we probably have the first serious container because this might be super interesting, especially for enterprise clients. Callstack knows about the needs of enterprise customers and they are also usually behind the React Native CLI. Shimon also put this tweet out where he mentioned that Today we're introducing a new React Native framework, successor to the React Native community CLI. So that clearly indicates where this project is going. And I think it's actually a smart move because I've talked to many companies before or developers from company and they usually said that, yeah, we can't use Expo right now. We're still on React Native CLI and we don't want to migrate. And there might be reasons for bigger enterprise companies to not migrate to Expo. Smaller teams, one, two, five people should be fairly easy to migrate to Expo and it's usually recommended at this point. However, if you have very specific enterprise needs and I'm absolutely not an expert in enterprise needs, then this might be exactly what you need. It has a modular design, it looks really nice, it looks like there will be a path to migrate from the community CLI to configure your own actions. The features they already have are interesting and the more features to come are even better. I think mobile micro front ends are a super hot topic. Uh, I've seen this recently on Jack Harrington's channel. Out of three platforms, not always easy to do with React Native over the air updates. Okay, something you just need to have just like continuous native generation. RSCs, something we will all use in the future, and then also Circle CI GitLab S3 support included. So I think the new React Native framework is not something uh, the usual Expo developer should fear or needs to use, but for enterprise, this could be a really great thing. The second news is a bit more spicy. Fernando Rojo, many of you should know him for great libraries like Zigo or Solito, has joined Vercel as head of mobile to continue building open source projects for web and native apps. And Guillermo also posted excited to join Vercel, keep raising quality bar of mobile and web ecosystem. We have a shared vision, best mobile apps or bust. So, what does this mean? I think Rofi put this into great words as he said, Vercel is behind in the mobile game, they know it. Expo Router is great, RSCs will be there soon, uh, we have EAS hosting which kinda competes with Vercel and Expo Router for web could be a direct competitor to Next.js. Expo is getting uh, little by little closer to the web and Vercel hasn't talked about mobile in years. That's good and welcoming in any case, let the games begin. And I think the games have already begun because things are already getting spicy between Guillermo and Evan Bacon. Guillermo posted about an application here that's been built with Next.js and Solito and everyone's like um, how was that mobile app built with Next.js? There's nothing in the iOS binary and of course every side has some truth. Uh, Evan went deep into the code and yes there's absolutely no Next.js in the binary of that application but our good mediator Jamin Holmgren to the rescue, he put everything into perspective. Probably the reason why Guillermo said that is because Solito is used, um, Solito uses also Expo and then the Expo application does use a backend which is Next.js. So the application is using the Next.js API which well I think probably the wording here was not correct. Maybe it was intentionally not correct. Who knows, but it just shows things are already getting a bit more spicy between Expo and Vercel. And I think we're gonna see more of that in the future. Coming back to the hire of Fernando Rojo, what does this mean for Vercel, for Next.js, for mobile plans? We don't know at this moment, but it's going to be interesting to see because I agree that Next.js has great potential. They could go into mobile somehow. My own post on using Capacitor with Next.js was one of the most popular posts I ever did. So this shows that people People are looking for a way to bring their Next.js application into a mobile app. However, if Vercel is just coming up with an adapter that allows you to bring like your Next.js app in an easy way with a web view into a mobile app, that's not better than Capacitor or Ionic in the past. And that model does not work anymore today, given how React Native and Expo and the next news that I will share work right now. Vercel has to get a bit more creative. I'm excited to see what they're cooking under the hood. Maybe they're already tinkering on something but I hope it's 
better than just an adapter for the web. Finally, there's a new cross-platform technology called Lynx. And, you know, I'm usually not jumping fast onto any new trend or get super hyped, but I'm super excited. This thing could be serious because the company behind Lynx is actually ByteDance. You might have heard that. Yeah, they're also, as far as I know, the owner of TikTok. And they also just recently open sourced Treya. I don't know how to pronounce it. Another AI editor, which looks a bit like Cursor. I think it's also a fork of VS Code. So they're open sourcing a lot of their tools and Lynx is actually already or has been used for years in TikTok. Lynx is more a family of tools. There's also R Speedy, which is using Rust. There are dev tools, Lynx for web, PrimJS for JavaScript optimization. And there's now also the React Lynx package, which means you can build cross-platform application with Lynx using React. They are all about um, shipping really native and really fast experiences. You know this from TikTok and other applications that today it's really about that performance bit. There's a great blog post here outlining what it's about. But under the hood, it's still about using what web developers know. So if you look at this, we see a lot of styling, CSS, you can write your own CSS. One of the most features or the features that's making links different is probably their thread model in which they have one main uh, thread responsibility for interactivity and then another background thread, which makes it really cool. So if you look at that startup experience here, I, I really have to admit that's like really, really instant stuff. There was a great article shared from Grok about like the differences between links and React Native. We have links and React Native differences in the multi-threaded engine. However, this article still assumes the JavaScript uh, bridge and bottleneck, which is not entirely correct for React Native anymore, given Fabric and the new architecture. Links also seems to have the option to either do native rendering or have pixel perfect consistency across mobile and desktop via custom renderer. If you look at the rendering uh, engine here, it's going to be pretty similar to what you're used to from React Native. Let's zoom into this. I hate it when a menu doesn't close. Okay. So if you have something in your links application, like a button, it's going to be a UI image, an image view, uh, or an image on the browser. Same here, UI text view, iOS text view, Android pretty much the same concept that you are used to from React Native already. Beyond that, what did Grok say as well? It's also mostly web inspired using CSS and styling. Herebot uh, shared some, well, not limitations, but he went into the uh, code and the documentation and he found some flaws already, especially something like React 17 API? Really? Uh, that really sounds like something we don't want to do anymore. You can also look at more. Uh, routing seems to be quite strange. I, of course, had that thing to give it a try. So you can do this. You can go to the Getting Started Guide. There's an application called the Lynx Explorer that you have to uh, install. You kind of need to build that binary yourself and launch it. And you can run bun run, I don't know, dev or something, which should bring up the RS build. You got a QR code. I wasn't able to manually build that app to deploy it to my native device. So I'm going to have to copy that over, enter it here, hit go. And then I'm in my Lynx application. If you look at this, it looks very familiar to React Native. Only thing is that we now import stuff like use callback, use effect, use state from the Lynx version of React. I don't know how I feel about this. The rest looks very similar to what we're used to. But of course, we would have to get more into that code. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in just seeing a bit more of how Lynx work and how we can build an app. I'm absolutely down to try this out. Speaking about similarities, Kashpa <laughs> also pointed out that some parts really look a lot like reanimate. So if we look at this with the main thread thing here, and then we look at to reanimate it where it's just worklet, it's quite similar. But the good thing is the developer who also wrote this great blog post um, for the introduction of Lynx is very humble about this. So Xuan Huang actually previously worked for React.js core and React Native. And he even said, I was lucky enough to have the chance to work directly with some of the most influential figures who have essentially shaped this era of UI technologies. No doubt it's been a part of my identity. Lynx definitely has respect for React. And I think this is a good starting point. You don't want to start off like a, with a big fight. I don't know where Lynx is going. I just think that this comment definitely won the award for the best comment. How long till the first job out ad goes live requiring five years? 
<laughs> it's, it's always the same. Finally, I just want to share the last words that Grok gave in the summary about like the differences and the key uh, similarities. Without hands-on testing or detailed technical documentation beyond this blog post, some of these differences remain aspirational or speculative. Link's real-world performance and adoption will ultimately determine how distinct it, it is truly from React Native. And I couldn't agree more. The blog post is interesting. The documentation of Links is cool. And what you can do with the code is already pretty cool in terms of like trying it out, running it on a device, but it really has to be seen how the ecosystem of Lynx develops and what people are making out of this. All right, let's recap quickly and put everything in perspective. So number one, call stack, the new React Native framework looks really great for enterprise applications that are still on React Native CLI. Vercel might move more into native land and we have to wait to see what they're cooking. And Lynx is an interesting approach and should be taken serious because ByteDance, the company behind TikTok is also mostly behind Lynx and that just means something. What does all this mean for experts? Well, currently they are way ahead in mobile infrastructure and tooling, so it's a clear choice for any serious app. They also double down on AI with their AI strategy and making strategic partnerships with Bold, Replit and all the other tools in the realm of wipe coding right now. Also, React Native is so much more stable and has a giant ecosystem that it would take a lot of time for Lynx or other new frameworks to entirely catch up what React Native has built up over the last like seven years. We can't predict many years ahead with the AI madness going on, but from what I've seen, React Native and Expo right now in 2025 are still your best bet for React Native native and universal apps. Finally, we shouldn't forget, Expo isn't sleeping. So Expo is working on new SDKs for maps, something pretty cool coming out, SQLite support for the web and many improvements coming this year for Expo Router, making sure they still remain the first choice, which they, by the way, are for most AI builders at this point. What's your take on all these developments? Let me know in the comments what's going to happen next. I'm super excited. Hit the like and stay subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, stay sane and happy coding. Simon.